saying life's good, but my my video capture kit has gone on the blink. So, right. uh, so I haven't got the stuff that I uh, what what I was going to show you uh, last time I, I saw you it was was what I'd just been looking at before you came on uh, line. Um, now, video yeah. capture is the is the device that you use when you are doing your scans to start saving the images. Uh, yes. I, I don't really understand that concept because all of mine get saved to a cloud. I don't know. I don't know the process that you yeah. use. So no, I, I use a video capture card from the video gaming world. So where people video themselves when they're playing computer games, uh, which is a thing apparently. And, uh, but I use it to, uh, so I can sort, uh, capture the, my actual scanning rather than having to save pictures or anything like that, or, or save video clips on the system. I have a deal for you. You tell me what you need. I'm so eager to see those pictures. We can have a win-win here, John. We'll bring you up to date to where you can be the video capture king. <laughs> no, I've got I've got, I've got the kit. It's just on the blink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meaning you have to fix it or, or what? Well, I've got, I'll, I'll try and fix it. And if I can't, then I shall, oh. uh, I shall find another solution. But I'm trying to look because I had, I had everything. Uh, what I do is because I, because the Mac I use is, uh, is, is great, but it has such a small memory is I take everything off it. Uh, when uh, after every every few weeks or so, I just download it all onto a onto an onto an extra drive, and so I'm just trying to think. Is this what you it. take to work, John? Is this Mac or is this the Mac where you use at home? I well, I I, I do both. I, it's I, I use it as a mobile office, so it's it's at home. But I take it to work with me, so I can I can play around with with various things. I'm just trying to think. What date was it last month? Last the tenth. So it'd be about uh, let's see if we go. So that was September. Uh, September. So September the seventh. That was probably the date. Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll share some stuff with you. If that's... Ooh, this is taking my mind off of what I was going to tell you. Yeah. Is 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 is, is that a a neuroma? No, it's a spacious cyst. Oh. Uh, inside oh that's 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 something that has um uh, um um uh, is that what i would refer to as pus the 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 echoic component of that this this stuff here you, you can you see my arrow on yeah. That? yeah 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 this this is the stuff the uh, the creamy thick goo that you get uh in uh, sebaceous cysts uh, interesting that now, stuff. See the acoustic uh, enhancement behind it. Yes, and uh, that's probably slightly more. If we wind back the video a little bit, you can see it there again. Yes, you can probably see it. It's slightly more dramatic with the color on. Remember, I said that the machine has uh, looks straight down when you get the color picture when the color box is on to save time. Yes. Down. So you see the edges of the acoustic enhancement are straight down the side. Let me see that back the back away is. Now this well, is, is a compound image. And so ah. you see the uh, acoustic enhancement narrows. Yes, I do now. Yeah. So, and then, so we come a little bit further forward. And yes, so, so here I'm checking because something like that can be anything, you know, from a sarcoma to a, uh, to a, say a sebaceous cyst or or even a, a tiny little hematoma but the things that make me think it's a sebaceous cyst is that through transmission is important but you still see nasties and certainly little vascular lesions with through transmission uh, but there's no there's no blood flow in it it's very much associated with the dermis as opposed to just the subcutaneous layer though though that is variable as well with these uh, but it, it doesn't look suspicious. There's no color flow in that. I've got the, uh, if you look at the values here, uh, the uh, sensitivity of the, the color is often given in centimeters per second. Uh, 
and I'd have to think quite hard to remember how that is, so I won't do that. But the smaller be, be, the number, be, be, the more sensitive. The smaller that number, the more sensitive it is to flow. Yes. Yeah. And so this is, uh, and uh, and you see that I've got a layer of jelly showing over the top of the lesion, making sure that I, I'm not making any pressure on it. I. I was going to comment on that to kind of make you feel impressed that I was impressed that 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 you were not pushing down on it because you're floating that on and I don't have a good oh yeah I do that's that's a good half centimeter or more of yeah. of um of gel yeah it's not a standoff pad you you you've created a build up of gel no you don't you you wouldn't use a stand I I I can't remember it probably it's nearly 20 years since I used to stand off gel. <laughs> <laughs> See but, here, uh, here I've just all the credibility that I did have for knowing you didn't push. I lost in claiming that I knew the word standoff gel and you're really? telling me that that's old school stuff. No, it's the, the standoff pads that they, they used. Uh, that is, that's a, a, a relic of, of bygone days when uh, in the early days when they made the probes, uh, they didn't really the, the way it was configured the crystals are quite close to the uh to the surface of the probe originally oh. so they didn't back them off and so the the zone where the, the image was really poor was uh uh was actually in in the tissue if you rested the probe on uh, and and so you got very poor quality because the focus the, the it was mostly mechanical focusing and so the image the, the signal wasn't really focused to the first centimeter or so and so that near zone gave awful image quality yeah and no, so I, if you wanted good quality you had to put put something on there and then eventually <laughs> it dawned on them you might as well put that into the probe well i won't be bringing that up again if i want to impress the person i talked to i will i will say though that in therapy they used to have this like karaya pad or this gel like yeah. thing uh, that looked like yeah. a ballistic type thing that I have for a a, um, um, a phantom, uh, but but you place over the top of fingers and stuff when we were doing thermal stuff. But yeah. anyway, and um, fascinating. Now this these are not things that come to you from a doctor saying, "Is this a sinister uh, event or is this a sebaceous thing?" This was just a finding you found on someone. No, this 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 would have been. This is on a list that I do where the doctors send it, asking whether it's it's benign. They they, they want to know what it is. So this is a radiology type list. Uh, so uh, and then I think this is uh, what this. Oh yes, where have we got? That's just a little node under the skin i think an unusual little lymph node so these are these are not this is on the tibia this is the tibia here and this will be uh, i think this is the uh tibialis anterior muscle belly there is just a small lymph node there the image quality on the capture on this is not quite so good so that's and i don't know why that's there it still has a little fatty hyaline there so it's not particularly suspicious in itself. It's just unusual to see it, such a large node. This is a small node by general body standards, but you don't normally see them in the in the shin. And so that's what, what you've got there. So when you say fatty, hyla, or the fatty material, uh, you know, my mind knows that what we're looking at is the interface between two, uh, two, two densities. It's fatty because you know that it is a fat composition that's in the middle of the uh, of, of the lymph node, or it's fatty because you've recognized that echo as fat. No, it, it, it's fatty because that's the anatomy of a lymph node. Okay, okay, all right, all right. However, that is in that is in the adipose layer. Is that correct? I mean, it is. Yeah. It is in the, the the layer between the the, the skin and the fascial uh, paramyceum or whatever they call that, epimyceum or something yeah. like that. Because I I just call it the subcutaneous layer. And you see, the subcutaneous yeah. layer here looks very normal. So it, it has uh, the um, dermis here. This is the superficial fascia overlying the muscle, uh, and then within the uh, subcutaneous fat, 
there are these normal uh, sort of uh, thin, almost diaphanous, uh, fibrous layers. Uh, and then here, there's clearly been some sort of inflammatory event because the fat is, there is what I would describe as reactive change around this node. That's yeah. very valuable to me, John, at yeah. what you're doing right now, because so you just, can see the architecture is yes. lost. Yeah. Almost images. as though in the process of going through that inflammatory event, there was some breakdown to the uh, fluffiness of the pillows of, uh, of, of fat or the corpuscles of, of fat. Uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Fascinating. Uh, but you, you knew that this was not a vessel because it did not have the architecture of a vessel and that when you went through it, it was a single bump of darkness. And, yes. and, and, and it also had what appeared to be uh, material on the inside of that lumen or, or whatever, if it would have been a vessel. So, all right. Yes. Um, uh, I, I know you want to get to something else, but I, if you ever find evidence of uh, what do they call that? Uh, tennis leg, or 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 any type of um, what is that? Uh, shin splints or something like that, where where it, where, where you see bony reactivity, or or whatever. I'd love I'd love to have you uh, show me some of that. But frankly, that just means I'd like to just go over case studies with you. So that now I'll listen. Yeah, I, that's the one. Uh, shin splints is something that just does not come to me. They don't, uh, so they don't, they never, that's, that's, I never get referred. Uh, uh, I don't know why you wouldn't. What, what, why wouldn't that show up just, to you? No, they just, they just, that's not what, uh, you know, they, they just don't get to me because they, they, they don't come for an ultrasound. They don't get oh. sent. So, so I can, I can say that I've maybe seen it once, twice. In my uh, it, uh, it may be that what I'm seeing are images and case studies of individuals who are seeing these people in rehab because they simply were referred to them and they happen to have an ultrasound scanner and they've put it over that site, not because any specialist is wanting to clarify the diagnosis. Yes, they'll, they'll, okay. they'll be the. The, the, the guys you're, you're seeing are often doing lots of sports medicine. Yeah. And so, and so that's, that's the majority of those that you will see or, 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 the, or they're working closely with, the, uh, with people who do that. I'm just going, I missed this Mac. Uh, now, I was going to find, see if I could find some, some other pictures of nodes for you, but I am, um, let me just see. I've got some Jeff that will just appear nice and quickly. I'm just um, I'm I'm just on a different screen, just seeing if I can. All right. Uh, yeah, let's just see. I have endless numbers, but for some reason my uh, my computer is not searching for them. Uh, That's so all right. Doing... John, well, can I can I can I work through that picture you just had up there with you briefly? Oh, yeah. oh, oh! Wait a minute. I want to I want to see this. Let's just have a look. Yeah, so these are these are just uh, some lymph nodes. So normal lymph node. That's that's then your normal anatomy for it. Uh, let's just see what else I've got on there. So what's that? No, that's something that's different. So this is normal lymph nodes, and then reactive nodes. So these are these are nodes that that have been inflamed and calming down a bit uh, so they've they've changed shape they've lost their perfect anatomy but there's nothing there's nothing actually suspicious here there's a little blood flow in the uh, in the central fatty hilum and there the fatty hilum is increased in size but the cortex though it's a little bit irregular there are no actual bulges out of it that here is much more suspicious yeah, so that's that uh, that that is suspicious of a cancerous event, or simply yes. of a metabolic process outside of the normal lymphatic it, anatomy. It is, I think, in practice, this this turned out to be a uh, a, a reactive process, a metabolic process. But that would certainly at gain my attention. Do your eyes see the 
the the echo composition of that round thing different than what you're calling the cortex of the lymph or, no. or are you seeing that as almost continuous in that if you were to push on that it would fill up the cortex yeah it's 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 um, it, it looks just as, as it runs your eye over it it just uh, looks like a bump a swelling on a, a, a hill on the top or a, a little polyp popping out of the thing here this the quality of that image is not terribly good it looks pretty old uh but there you're seeing vascularity you have to imagine this a bit that's the cortex this is yes. going to be the fatty high where the fatty hyalin was yes. uh, and the vascularity all comes from a single point here which again is is within is is a more normal uh vascular architecture so this is where it gets these are clearly abnormal you see that's lost all its normal shape yes it doesn't have a normal shape there's no central fatty area this again again the vascularity doesn't have a nice center and spreading out so these this this is a, and it's lost its lymph node shape which is like a little girl's handbag a, a lymph node should have that nice sort of uh, sort of like like a little pencil case type appearance uh this is starting to more more shot like is is often the term used uh so did you say, uh, did you say shot like shot as in like the bits out of a a shotgun oh okay all right you know, like, like pellets yes 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 yeah. So more a little bit more pellet like which is is more suspicious that's that's not what lymph nodes look like even when they're swollen because they're active both of those do have a characteristic of through transmission or what did you call that where it looks a little brighter on the back side of that yep that's a uh, uh, enhancement okay uh, yep. through Posterior transmission enhancement. okay the enhancement there where have we gone to so so these ab they look like abnormal lymph nodes uh these again they look abnormal do you see that's too round too too much heading towards round loss of its shape i know that looks like a hyaline but when you scan through it it wasn't uh it wasn't because you knew that it just didn't follow your normal echo texture of what yeah. hyaline would look like yes yeah i i can't show you because it's a single it's single yeah. shot but it, yeah but it, have that classic uh, kidney shape. A, a, a lymph node looks very much like a, a, a miniature form of a kidney. Okay. Uh, so these were both turned out to be high-grade lymphoma. Uh, and, and this again, even though the vascularity is just coming out of here, there's a bit too much of it. And this was had metastatic infiltration into the node. Uh, that was, I, but I, I have a lot more... Uh, if I if I have a chance next time, I'll just search the right hard drive and and show you lots of lots of different lymph nodes because they're good things to be uh, uh, to be aware of because not that you'd be looking for them, but it's one of those things you sort of should ideally have an awareness of because because then they're all the way through these things are all the way through even if you can't see them all the way through the musculoskeletal uh, things yes. so when they're normal you want to you, you want it to catch your eye. I believe that the same thing occurs in um, uh, lesions of the skin where we should be capable of at least knowing how to elevate the appearance of a skin um, mark or lesion with eyes of knowledge so that we can direct patients. We're looking at the back of their shoulder that they don't ever see really. So yeah, I, I, I value that. Yeah. Take me back to this picture you were just going to have. Which which one? Yeah, that one there where you oh, were yeah. over. Yeah. yeah, and 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 I want I would like to I would like to have either I want to talk through where my eyes are or I would like to have you get a little bit robotic with me as your eyes are scanning this picture because you know, it would be nice like in flying if if you know we have gas undercarriage mixture prop type things that we 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 put into view and i don't want to i don't want to dim you know dim this down but that initial picture i saw what looked like uh cortical or periosteal echoes down below and it looked as though it had 
uh, some level of um, defect to it. It's not a solid bone. Above that, I, I see, you know, I, so, but I don't know what you're looking at. Are you immediately looking at the, 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 the uh, let me just listen to how you break down the image. This is what I'm looking at. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. Uh, this is the uh, greatest tuberosity, greatest trochanter, sorry. Okay, so it's in the hip then. Yep, so lat lateral hip. Yes. Uh, that patient had a fall uh, probably a long time ago. Uh, you've got bone irregularity over the greatest canter, but you often do. Uh, but they've got this area here where there is sort of some sort of, and it's not, ah. a, not a lesion. It is a, uh, if I kind of come through it, it's, it looks like fatty reactive change within a uh, morel levale type lesion but it tracks all the way up to the skin i don't and know that fancy that. french term you just used i've i've seen it written down a few times and i've heard i've seen academics throw it around and i tried to come smart on it one time but i i i, I don't exactly know what that is let's have a look uh morel Lavale. Uh, and I'm sure I have some video uh, videos, but uh, what do, what you get with a Morel Lavale lesion? If I just show, it, probably better if I uh, stop sharing, and then if we go, they are they are they're certainly worth noticing uh, or worth being aware of because. You will see them, and, and you'll see them in funny places. But traditionally, when you land on your greater trochanter, when you're old and you fall over and you've got the skin up there and you've got the greater trochanter here with the iliotibial band going over the top of it, yeah? Yes. And then you've got, you've got your various layers of fat. What happens is that when you hit that land hard, uh, you don't normally break this, you, you often don't break this bit, but you literally tear the fat. So you literally rip the fat and, and that often forms a, a defect along a line like that. And, of, and often that will fill up with hematoma. So you get lots of blood in a packet there that, that dissects the, uh, uh, the fat. Uh, and instead of dissipating it, because often, and, and happens in young people as well, so it isn't just a disease of the old people, uh, but, but what happens is it eventually forms a capsule around that, and you get this lake of fluid, lake of serous fluid sitting there. And I think the way I've heard people discuss it is that once it forms a thick layer, and sometimes that, that wall is, is quite thick. I saw one a couple of days ago, actually. I've got one. Uh, but it, it doesn't have a paper-thin capsule. It forms a thick capsule. And then they just don't really go away. You can it's drain... Like, it's like a Ziploc bag, and, and, and it just doesn't let whatever happens to be yeah. inside there out. And if you take it out, it, the fluid just comes up because the bag is still there. You know, because you normally, when you get a, a collection like a bruise inside the body, the, the boundary of it may be complete, maybe even a capsule weight, but it's usually a very thin, fine capsule. Once that thickens up for any reason, then they need to come out surgically if they're going to be removed. And so that, that is traditionally the treatment for a morel lavale lesions. But they can be, they can have almost no fluid in them, or they can be quite fluidy. Let me just see if I can just pick so my, up. My, my question then is going to have this component to it that you alluded to in our WhatsApp chat, or at least your response to that. As, as the fluid tissue of blood sits in a space yeah. and the body either does varying levels of absorption of that serous fluid or, yeah. or it goes through a maturing of blood, yeah. Is there a, 
a point in the appearance where we can see the blood products, the hard, the ground substance or whatever we want to call that, will they conglomerate or congeal? So we'll see anechoic levels of, of separation like we would expect to see in a beaker, uh, you know, where, where they would fall out. Do, do, and and, and the, the, the cloudiness in that morel... Lavelle, <laughs> the Not bag, Lavelle. <laughs> yeah, that, that the, 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 is what I saw on your demonstration, blood, because you use the term fatty, and, and so what I don't know is, is, no, that was, that was on that previous lesion, I have no idea why that collection has been replaced with fat, it was, it was a one-off, so I, I we, uh, and, and we all certainly won't get any histology on it. But I guess my concern is how confident you said you don't know how it went fat because the way you used fat, there was no question in your mind that that echo texture was fat. I want to know how come, and I want to have that same level of of confidence to be able to go, uh, you know, secondarily, that's fat. What, what was it, the fact that it was homogeneously cloudy? Homogeneous, bright. Uh, it didn't move like fluid when I pushed on it because occasionally fluids can be very bright as well. Um, and, and that's, you know, I don't know it's fat. Yeah. But I can't really think of what else would look like that. But it wouldn't be fluid. islands of blood, the hard product of blood, because when you push on it, we would expect those would go like this type thing and, 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 and that stayed where it was. Uh, let's have a look. If I can get this to work... It's the problem is searching these things. Uh, if I go, uh, what I'm struggling with at the moment is is using. I've got a nice external hard drive, uh, but I'm not sure I'm. It's being very helpful when I search for it. So if I go hematoma. That should get us. And if I go. Plus, and we want a uh, kind uh, name uh, and matches. And we go uh, MP4. Uh, I've got two on this. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see what we've got there. Uh, sorry, I'm the, the, no, the other right. been, hasn't been edited out, so no I'm worries. just trying to see anything. Yeah. Yeah, I see that looked like, looks like blood product here. Let me just show you that. That's not a particularly good example. Uh, it's something I probably need to search for you in, uh, uh, in advance. All right. Uh, just so I can find stuff that is uh, that's been edited for. Take me back to day. that. Take me back to the image that got us here, so I can better understand. Did did the image that you have already start to form the thicker capsule that you were talking about? Uh, hang on, not really. That wasn't. Uh, it was a Morel Laval. I was suggesting it was a Morel Laval lesion because of where it was and because oh. there was there was a tract there. But I suspect it possibly didn't. Uh, it, it may even have developed from some sort of uh, infective process, or uh, there. It was just the fact that it's a sack of stuff that is that was contained uh, within that that fat layer. Uh, it was more like a Morel Lavalle lesion in, in the sense that it was a sort of almost alien uh, structure, but not a not a mass in the sense that it. Uh, some sort of growth mass. What I think is probably the f it is just sort of there's been some fatty uh, proliferation. Uh, and and this is, in part, this is that's because it was bit. located. I'm sorry. Yeah, this this is a classic uh, hematoma here. Am I? St I'm still sharing this picture. Am I? You've got my cursor in the middle there. Uh, no, you're you're sharing your drawing right now with me. All right. Let me. Sorry. Let me that's stop okay. share. And take you back uh, to 
Yeah. There we go. And there. So, so this is a, um, a hematoma. This is the your blood products within, uh, okay. within abdomen after uh, I think there's been. I think, let me see what is. Yes, this is uh, hematoma uh, post surgery. So someone's had some surgery through the belly button, and this is just a hematoma uh, around that. Where they at the portal site, and uh, there's lots of reaction in the fat around it. But this is the blood product here. Uh, let's see if we've got some. If I can find this, uh, there's a bit more of the same. And there you see that. Ooh. So this is what happens to, or often happens with, uh, if you wait a little bit. This is the fibrin. Uh, what is a little left. bit? Are we talking hours? Or are we talking days, John? Uh, I would said probably days, weeks, perhaps. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So this. And is... if you were to push up and down on that, it would it would flop around like seaweed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this this will all be fluid here. Yep, that's and... valuable to me. Yeah. Oh, oh! Much more like what you what you saw there. So this is this is this is fluid in motion. Wow, that's that that was in that little pseudo something you were telling me about. That was in a, a pseudo a aneurysm or something like that. That was yes. Wow, yep. and where is this, John? Is this is this abdomen as well? Yep, this is abdominal wall. And this is fluid collecting there, and I. I I think these are all yeah these are all similar surgical cases uh this is yeah sorry these haven't all been anonymized oh gotcha uh, fully, but this is there let's have a look yeah. so we'll get together and and i'll show you some some of these another time yeah we can go through them um uh, look we go Let's go. I will go to here. I'll grab this. I'll see whether or not you are able to see me looking at a screen that has um, the humeral head in a blurry fashion and what looks like a supraspinatus coming and touching the, the superior facet. Are, are you seeing my effort at explaining that? I mean, we do loud and clear. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to see whether or not it'll actually, sometimes I have to go back and let me refresh this page. Um, and again, you, you know, I image with Clarius. So that's what we're going to be looking at. And this, the way Greg would describe this image, I am looking at the rotator cuff in long axis. Um, yep. And I'm going to scan what I would say medial to the long head of the biceps. And then I'm going to scan what my eyes see as a slope change between the superior uh, facet supraspinatus attachment and as it starts to flatten out in what at least I have in my mind view more as the infraspinatus attachment. I think yeah. there was an interesting clarification that I would like to explore again with you sometime as to the fact that you have a concern about the lack of interdigitation, but in fact it is on top of each other. I, yep. I, I would like to explore that because again, you'll see that, well, let me just show this to you, John. I always, I have this stuff because it's like I'm showing a teacher and I don't want you to give me a bad grade. So I've got to try to cover all my problems beforehand, but here we yep. go. <laughs> so I'm taking it um, from, from, I'm trying to scan medial to, to, to lateral. I'm coming lateral now, seeing the slope go down, and I see what looks like a hyperechoic area within the footprint of the infraspinatus. So it'll, it'll, it'll come around again. I'm now playing on the, on the lateral aspect of that. I'm starting again. That's, I, I just briefly touch the long head of the biceps. This is now through what I'm seeing. A chromion is up here to the left. Down here, I'm now playing again in a long axis rotator cuff 
view. I, I don't know what you would say that that would be. Would that be sagittal? I don't know what the actual term would be for this for this view. However, the, the next one I'm going to show you is going to be the posterior window, where this is the glenoid, this is the humerus, and this is what I view as the infraspinatus tendon. And when I hit play on that, and then I have them externally rotate, what it brings up is a fairly large bulge, and I can find the same echo texture from that posterior window. So my mind is trying to put together a three-dimensional thing. <laughs> that thing, we could also use the term lesion. But, yep. but I'm seeing a calcific, oh no, I should say a, a, a brighter mass, which I would be saying would be a reactionary process within the tendon, like that calcium hydroxyapatite type thing, or, or whether or not I don't see an avulsive response to say that this is a tendon retraction. Now, I'm going to let you do the talking. <laughs> can you pause it there? I can pause it anywhere, and I can drag it anywhere, John. That, that will, that will drag, it, drag it back a little bit. Yeah, that, that's good. Or, yeah, no, a bit, bit, bit more so we can see it, so the lump's on the screen. Yep, there. I think. Uh, it's a shame I can't put my marker on it. Uh, but okay, you come down to, uh, one centimeter, two centimeters down screen, and and to the middle of the screen. So there, no, up a bit, one up, up a, uh, or there, yep, there, just there. That is the surface of your um, calcium uh, deposit, uh, and there is the acoustic shadow behind it, just underneath it. That. That space there is your slightly incomplete acoustic shadow because you can just about make out the line of the cortex. Meaning the that it, it doesn't have a crystalline structure or doesn't have uh, air within it as dense as a piece of bone would have. This is no. more of a toothpaste type of material. And no. that's, would you be, is it, uh, let me just keep listening to you. I think it's, it's probably not toothpaste, it's probably uh, chalk. Oh, so oh. they go through. They, they they describe them as being an, a creation phase and then a hard phase, and then a, a t it, it then reverts to toothpaste. I don't know how accurate that is, but you certainly you certainly get different grades when you stick a needle in these. Uh, it often feels like you're tapping some chalk, and, and if you shove the needle really hard, you can often get it into it, uh, and sometimes you can't, uh, and when you can see all the way through it reasonably well, then it then it's like toothpaste. So you ah. can usually, usually get most or all the way through toothpaste. Uh, uh, if you had to forensically time this or or stage this, this is months or is this weeks? If this person, uh, it's difficult to say, huh? Uh, well, I've we've been scanning. I've been teaching on a shoulder course. Uh, we now do up in Writington most years, uh, and they scan my shoulder as part of it uh just during the demo usually and there's a piece of calcium been sat in my supraspinatus since for at least 12 years probably okay so it's <laughs> actually now it's probably about 14 or 15 years they've seen that every time there's a lump in in my right supraspinatus so it's the you don't have a timeline on it but we know they they're there we see uh and we always tell the patients when they uh when it comes out of suspension, when it when it desolidifies, is is when the body's starting to get rid of it, and typically, that's when it's at its most painful. Is as as it gets squeezed, once it becomes soft, it gets squeezed out into the bursal plane. I think I saw. Oh, it one. it 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 erupts into the actual environment of of tissue, and it creates a reactionary response. Is like like pus yeah uh yes yeah very much so and it bursts um, into the uh into the bursa let me just see when i i'm gonna i'm gonna just have you take a look at this this when i take a look at this which is a subscapular a short axis yep. what is this what's that uh when you're without being in motion you would uh 
uh, you can't be sure. It it could be bursa. It could be muscular tenderness junction. Okay. Uh, and then I want to have your input on this as a dimension of the infraspinatus. Is it again hard to say that the calcific area is back here? This is simply tendinopathy, and and the way you would clarify what this is is through compression would you how, would you would you refine out uh, whether we can get anisotropy out of it to determine a tendon or, or fiber orientation or how do you tickle out more information than that's a little bit wider than we would normally want uh, well why this is so so difficult you the bone is nice and thin there and so it's reasonable to say that you're probably close to an optimum view. Uh, you haven't got very much fiber detail in there. That might be due to its depth, due to the quality of the image, due to the quality of the patient. Uh, you want to, I would look at it probably in, I would into the, in the other plane. That looks like it's probably a short axis. Yeah, uh, that's what that is. But not even a beautiful one because like it could be the slice thickness has me turned a little bit and so i'm getting a little bit of a you know wrong hey I, I used that correctly didn't i john i saw your head go up and down yeah anyway um but yeah i i when i'm playing with it and i'm going through trying to keep my my fiber orientation a certain way and i get to a large tendon like that i know the textbooks simply say well, that's called tendinopathy, which is another way of saying we don't really know what we're looking at. We're just going to say there's a there's a thing going on in there, and yeah. and and so I, I, I'm just trying to refine out as much as I can on that. At what point do you load it? At what point do you tell them push into external rotation? At what point do you do, do you try to to evaluate whether there's uh, whatever? I, I look at it, I, I start off in, in what I describe as a simple karate punch position. So with the arm just taken back with no external rotor. You know, when you do a karate, you know, they, you see them in karate with their arm like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay, so, okay. So no, no internal or external rotation. So what I typically use is a low bat chair is my preference uh, and, and static. And uh, so even my old ladies, they can just lean back on the chair Yes, and uh, hopefully it's not too too much mess. And they literally, and obviously a much much lower back chair than this one, uh, and they just pop the arm behind it, but with the palm facing forwards, yes. like this, just resting against the chair. Yes. And so that's my optimum position for examining the uh, the rotator cuff, the the supraspinatus and infraspinatus. I will scan in that position for most patients. I do it, I, I, I think of it as long section and short section, and I talk about it being anterior. Supraspinatus is the, uh, uh, the bit that's parallel to the biceps at the front, and then you go posteriorly. So that's the, that's okay. the language I use okay. for okay. navigating that. So I'm All short right. and long, I'm yes. proximal distal when I'm yes. traveling along the tendon. Yes. So it's, it's all my references are to the, uh, to the structure I'm looking at. Yes. So, so supraspinatus, you're going distally or you're going proximally uh, along it, uh, it if you're in short axis and you're going post anterior to posterior in, in long axis. Gotcha. So that's that. Uh, that simplifies that side of thing. Now, wh where were we going to with that? I've lost my train of thought. Uh, I, I I was just trying to identify oh, when was, we're looking at that that there. Yes, when you were there, it didn't look though you though you were in a good uh, plane in terms of its relationship to the bone. It didn't look like you were actually in the direct uh, short axis on supraspinatus or infraspinatus, and that will that will compromise your image quality. And and will take away the level of confidence I have with regard to the the fiber uh, composition. Um, at what point do you just simply push down on it and see if you can smash the sucker? You will will you you just do that. You know, if if you're suspicious that you know with the you, you run the probe over, you can't see 
good fiber structure, then you push up and down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like something out of a, a um, uh, Michael Jackson movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 it is in learning how to. I love your concept of going from worst to worst through best and, and, and doing that on, on the three planes of movement, recognizing what anatomy does. And, and if, you can, if you can do that, there's times when um, strategically you do want to go to the extremes of those pictures uh, to evaluate what orientation those fibers are anyway. Um, I want to talk about one last thing that's not relevant to this, and then I'll let you kind of pick up. Oh, you got something to share. Yeah. Is this you? No, this isn't me. No, mine's nice and solid. Oh, okay. This and you know that because it's black underneath. Yes. Okay. So this is... How much do you enjoy lavaging these john because i will tell you the way that the the way that your colleagues explain the level of almost internal thrill that they get when they pull this stuff out i mean i have sequence of you know look what i drew out of of of, of this kind of stuff so is there a certain amount of um, satiation that you get in in uh, not just what i hear is patients look at you like you've just saved my life well, they they do they do appreciate it. Uh, I I do it. I used to do it quite a lot, and uh, I found that so uh, my protocol now is to is to give them a, a simple steroid injection, and the vast majority of them are better just with that, which is disappointing because it is a much more interesting process if you <laughs> do the lavaging and uh, and thing. But they there's so many. And, and, and this is something that I see quite a lot. Uh, you know, I won't see one a week, but I see uh, that sort of, uh, uh, when I'm busy, that can be the sort of numbers. And I maybe have to do one or two a year now because they just get better with a simple, well-placed steroid injection. Settles them down perfectly well. And, uh, and so I don't actually do the lavage. I think if... If everyone that looked like they needed it, then I'd be doing a couple a month. But wow, wow, wow. I'd only do a couple a year. So, so again, you have to understand when you throw out things like simple, well-placed injection, th th that has so many clarifications that you know I'm eager to at least learn what that even sounds like. Well-placed as opposed to I don't know what. So, so to me, all I'm hearing you say is, Greg, if you're smart enough to know that the friction point is here and you deliver the steroid between this point and this point here, that pain's going to go away. I, 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 I don't even know what you're talking about, but I'm assuming that, you, that there is anatomy to that. If, if, if I was discussing my fee, I might put it like that. The truth is you just have to put some into the, right into the subacromial bursa. Uh, and I tend to go close to where the calcium is. I'm not sure that it's that important, but it, it just it it a genuine subacromial injection seems to work very nicely. As opposed to what the As the injections to, that are out there, where they just go in the region of it. Yes. Yeah. But and, I, and but when I you have, say no well, evidence. what's that? I have I have no proof that one is better than the other in, in this case. No no personal proof because I I haven't done an unguided injection for. <laughs> Uh, decades. <laughs> <laughs> so I will listen to you now on this because I want to have you in the last five minutes talk about something different. So yeah, let's just have a quick whiz. Just I, this is not not my finest hour in terms of the video, but there was just so nice what you could see. And this is a patient who turns up uh, having desperate for an injection. Uh, because they had sudden onset of really, really unpleasant shoulder pain uh, for no good reason. The rotator cuff, which you can see there, this will be a bit of supraspinatus. Uh, and, I, and I'm not going anywhere in particular because I just wanted to see the calcium. And this, right. is, this is the calcium in that surface of supraspinatus, probably, or maybe just infraspinatus from the shape of the bone there. And the bursa's reacting above it. So that's uh, sort of inflammatory low echogenicity thickening of the bursa 
Uh, that's not fluid. Yeah. That's just thickening yeah. of the tissue. It's, uh, so many times, and I probably was gu guilty of this in my youth as well, of seeing this little line here and saying yes. that's fluid in the bursa. Well, it, okay. Of course it's not. It can't be fluid in the bursa because I'm pressing down on it and it would go away if it was fluid. Okay. So when you see a thickened bursa, yes. if, if when you press it doesn't disappear, then it's not fluid. And the fluid tends to collect the, in the dependent yes. area. Yes. So, so you don't get, unless you've got, when you see that thickened line, that low, that's going to be some form of edema, probably. Okay. Uh, or that high water content. But this is the same person that you're, you're showing me how inflamed they, 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 they are? Yeah. Wow. Yes, inflammation. That's what makes it painful. Now, this patient, uh, while they were waiting to see me, because I was, I was very full, my list uh, had um, took lots of naproxen and the pain pretty much went away, which was very disappointing because it would have been nice. <laughs> it would have been nice for you to be able to inject it, you're saying. Yeah, it, it, it would have been nice. Now, somewhere, yes, this, just this bit. Can you see here, these are fibers, I think of infraspinatus, obliquely going in. Do you see how they're disappearing into the bone? Yes. Just, just this bit here. Yes. Now, that's not what I'm looking at, but that's just to give you a position. So, so everywhere I go further down is going down the side of the uh, humerus. Uh, further Beyond down, the, meaning distal. Yes, further distal down the lateral side of the humerus. Yes, yes, yes. So this, this is the, uh, the border of the, uh, the superficial border of the infraspinatus. Yeah. Yes. This is the bursa here. Yeah, and what, yes. does, what happens as I go down, as I go inferiorly this way, this is the calcium, this is the toothpaste. Yes. Sitting, resting in the bursa, just going down the side there. And I've lost it there, and I just, that's the clip there. Yeah. So this was, I, I had a lot to do in this, uh, this patient came to see, to see me, but they had several things they wanted me to look at. So it was just a sort of quick wipe yeah. over. But I think what I, I, I think what I heard you say is that uh, those pockets of calcific sand can yeah. erupt. And in this case, they simply followed gravity down to the bottom of the bursa and, 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 and came and left whatever the fiber pocket was that they may have been in previously. And there, and you can see there, it's, it's just in the suit, just coming out of the, uh, probably coming out of the tendon there. And, uh, and then we come around a bit further We're in, in the tendon. And then as I come through, you'll just see this is calcium that's still within the tendon packet. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. So it would have been Amazing. quite interesting to see what, uh, what she was like before. The, if we'd scanned the patient before they had their symptoms, uh, it would have been lovely to see one and then followed the other. Uh, I've had a couple of cases where we've seen that. but uh, I... I I once saw what I think you're describing is that when she first came in, I did a scan. I saw this enormous cloud within a tendon. My mind just said, uh, that's what, you know, that, that, that must be calcification. I gave her some exercises and stretches. She came back claiming it is the worst it has ever been. I looked again inside and that was no longer delineated within the tendon, but, but there was a lot of fluid all around inside. And it was, I'm going, oh my goodness, did, did she rip and tear her, her, her rotator cuff? And she was, you know, in two weeks, she was back to where, hey, I'm feeling really good. And so I'm thinking maybe it was when it was still in a pocket that, that, that the Chris Myers or the John Lettys would go in and do their little lavage thing and pull things out in these beakers, and she would start to go, wow, you've just, you've just kept this from bursting. Oh, I need to let you go. I, no, I, no, I no. Yeah, I, I need to go in a couple of minutes. I was just yep. going to show you one more thing, if that's all right. Yep, yep. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, are we still sh am I still sharing? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so we talked about Morel-Lavale lesions. Okay. Wow. 
and so this is this is not a, not absolutely classic this is around the ankle uh, but there's the fluid collection it's been there for years but it's just you're looking at the thick layer here which is the, t the sort of typical appearance so i go through i will go there do you see the wall there yes it's just a little bit more thickened it's not a sing a, a, a single fine line this is within is the sub, uh, subcutaneous fat layer and before we yes. get actually down to any structures. Yes, and in actual fact, this one is, isn't an absolutely typical one because you do see some anatomical structures. So that there's an, a, probably a nerve there just that's actually tracking through. I got gotcha. you. Because uh, we're, we're at the tarsal tunnel here. Is that what you're looking at? It, or? It, it's, it's the other side. This, it's, okay. it's, I gotcha. this is on the lateral side of the ankle, I think. Uh, okay. Yes, you can just see that nerve with some fatty reaction around it. Fascinating. This is incredibly valuable to me, John. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to get to my last subject. I'll speak to you next week. All right. Bye-bye.